Hey everybody, this is Curtis from PSN Stores, and today we are looking at Tower of Guns. Uh, this game came out this week. It is one of the PlayStation Plus games. So you can go ahead and grab it for free uh, if you're a member of Plus. Uh, but we're just going to get in there. And uh, this is a uh, first-person shooter roguelike. So what that means, obviously, is that you know every, every time you play, uh, once you die, that is it. Um, you start from the beginning. Uh, the only things carrying over are uh, any guns that you're unlocking and any of the perks that you're unlocking. So, uh, basically, you start out with these two guns. The peas and, uh, peas and carrots pistol, which is really bad. And then the portable pizza oven, which uh, shoots out like saw blades, which is uh, pretty neat. Um, so, I've unlocked two guns so far. The Egon's Pride and uh, the Constellation Constellation Charger. Sorry, uh, this you get for dying three times. So I've done three runs so far. So I've got that gun, and then this you get for beating a part time on a level, which you'll see in a second. Uh, so I'm gonna do this one, uh, Egon's Pride. And then you have some perks. So you have a triple jump from the start. You're immune to fall damage. Uh, stuff like that. You see that I can see what I need to do to unlock the other perks. So like firing 2,999 shots. I'm uh, getting pretty close to that. Uh, leveling up 70 times. Finding felt 5 health upgrades in one life. Uh, 15 badges in one life and beating the game. There's also game modes. So there's normal. There's endless, which should be pretty self-explanatory. And then dice roll. I'm not too sure exactly what dice roll is. Uh, but we'll do normal. So, as you might expect from a, any kind of like roguelite, uh, stages are randomly generated. The, the layout is, is random. Um, the enemies you fight, the bosses you fight, the, the special like power-ups that you find, they're all random. Then we got uh, Henry, a DM, DMV representative. <laughs> Hello. Uh, oh, okay. Never mind. Like to apply for a driver's license. This is where I wait. So there's like, I've noticed. So this is my now my fourth time playing through. These conversations at the beginning and end of a level are all different. Um, they all kind of say the same thing. Like at the right here at the start of this first level, we're getting kind of like a tutorial message, and it's like, oh yeah, you know to to get through to the next floor, you you shoot the door, and then the door opens. And it's like, okay, yeah, sure. And, uh, but there's always, like, one character, and then there's, like, you. Uh, but they've all been different characters so far. So, I don't know, like, I've, I found that they've been pretty easy to just ignore. Like, they try to be, it's, it's a real, like, self-aware kind of humor. Um, there was one where it was, like, a butler, and some other kid and the kid's like oh I, I shoot the door to to get to the next level and the butler is like oh yeah I don't I don't understand you kids and your video game logic and it's like okay yep <laughs> all right so the blue orbs that drop uh, you collect those and your and that is how you level up uh, you're leveling up your gun you're also picking up these power-ups, so now my blue XP rate is up. And then I think I just got uh, another jump. So I started out with three jumps because of that perk that I chose. Uh, you can continue to pick up um, extra jumps. So my first run through, I ended up having like seven jumps. You see there are the, I have 15 coins right now. You'll find like little shops where you can buy, there's a specific power-up that you can buy from it. Usually it's around like 50 to 70 coins. Uh, obviously the red orbs are your health.
Take care you see one of the shops. I obviously don't have enough coins, but that that would give me enough another jump. That's what that would do. Uh, so yeah, like it's you know, pretty kind of simple premise. It starts out not not too bad, although I'm close to dying already. Uh, a lot of the en enemies I've seen so far kind of fit this kind of mold where they just not a whole lot of it. I mean, they're like the cannons that are. That's great. They're they're the cannons that like are shooting at you. Um, but a lot of like flying robot enemies that kind of like, just like all in waves just fly towards you. Uh, okay, so there you see the badges I've collected, uh, the perks that I was using, the guns, the gun that I used, and then some like other just like statistics over on the left. So we'll play again. This is all right. This is Cake Town. I've counted up your wins and losses, and it looks like you, this is your fifth run. Okay. It's a point where people could do with a bit of a surprise. Use these gifts to help you have a good fifth run. Huh. I got a new gun. All right, so you see here, um, this is different because this is a unique level, but each level has a part-time. Uh, so you gen genuinely, or generally, you want to get under the part-time. It's usually like a few minutes, and then there are different secrets you can find in each level. So 351 is part-time here. Uh, what I was, what I was going to say is, before I died, oh, we get the DMV guy again, um, is that this gets to be a pretty fast-paced shooter. Uh, it reminds me a lot of, like, kind of your old, like, Quakes and Unreal tournaments and stuff like that. And that's kind of, like, what I've seen it compared to, and definitely reminds me of that, and that, kind of that style of just a very fast, like, jumping around, all sorts of stuff, uh, Rockets flying everywhere. And kind of like arena shooter, except it's just a single player roguelike now. On the top right, um, it says no item equipped. I did, at least on my first run, I did find an item, and it was. It was like a mystery box, and so every time I was able to use it, which is when those meters fill up on, on the right, uh,. Like, it gave me a different effect each time. So you could, I mean, it, it's kind of the thing where, like, I haven't really been hitting part-times that much because I've been wanting to, like, kind of go around and, and make sure that I kill every enemy in, the, in each stage uh, because I want to get, like, the XP drops so that I'm sure that my, my gun levels up as I go. But, I mean, you could potentially just kind of run through these, these levels pretty quick. Uh, thus far, the level cap for guns is level 5. I don't know if that increases or not. Um, you do hit- you hit 5 pretty quick. Or you can. Again. Well, I guess that gives us a chance to check out some other guns. Um, my first run was about 35 to 40 minutes. I got pretty far. I don't know if I got to the- I, I died on a boss. Um, I'm not sure if it was the final boss or not. I don't know. And I was reading and it and it seems like this is something that you can beat within an hour. Uh, granted, 
it might take you a long time to do because you do have, you know, once you die, you got you you have to start over. So, and it seems like it can be a pretty tough game. So, uh, let's see. We just unlocked this hand cannon, so let's try that. We'll do. Uh, I don't know. I like the triple jumps. That's pretty nice to start with. But we'll do. Curious what this does. The too young to die. Naturally, I would start dying really quickly as soon as I start recording. <laughs> hmm. You start the game, a random plot is chosen, and that's the game's story. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's all very, uh, very self-aware. Which is fine. But if you don't care about that, that it seems like it's pretty easy to just ignore. So I'm assuming that that perk I chose may have been like a super easy difficulty. Um, mainly due to the pacifier icon. It also seems like I'm taking a lot less damage, though. Alright, so here's a boss. Uh, the order in which you fight bosses seems to be pretty random. Like, I fought this guy three times now. My first run through, he was like the fourth boss I fought. Although my last two runs, he's been the first one, so... Or E, but it's, it's just a wall of spikes, so. <laughs> Although that said, um, the form in which this uh, big old spike room has come in has been different. So, this is uh, the second time that I fought it, and it's been like, it's been a room like this that kind of closes in on you. But the first time I, I came up against it, it was a, it was a more open room, and it was, uh, it was like multiple like walls that were rotating within the room that had spikes on them. So I don't know if that's the same for every boss, like if every boss has like a different kind of type of form to it. I haven't seen enough multiple times to know. But I guess we'll see. Alright, so I do want to show off the other gun that I have right now. Let's 
So we will do the Constellation Charger. So yeah, it looks like damage, damage armor loot XP. I'm assuming it just makes it a lot easier. Because I was definitely taking a lot less damage. Loot never vanishes, immune to self damage. Um, well, these are all pretty, like, self explanatory, so I'm gonna stick to the triple jump. And let's do. let's do dice roll. So I've done this once, I didn't really notice. Like a major difference, so I'm not, I'm not too sure what's different in this mode, but okay. well, that's this is kind of cool. Okay. So these guys, these, uh, I think they're called hug bots. They're not, they're not dangerous, but typically they're pretty good about giving XP. Although I, I got like nothing that time. Ah, uh, okay. I must not have noticed that the first time. So, plus 100 money. Okay, so that's what dice roll is. Uh, I did play it once. I didn't know. I guess I didn't notice the that notification there at the bottom. So that's actually kind of cool. That wouldn't. I feel like I might find myself wanting to play dice roll more than the the normal mode. Just, just due to the fact that, you know, like, each stage is gonna have... Even this, each room... It's gonna have, like, a totally different effect. So this is also a, a new boss I've not seen before. And I'm gonna die very quickly. <laughs> yep. I like that it keeps a tally of how many runs you've done. So I'm 0 for 6. 
Uh, yeah, then it shows your lifespan, how much money uh, you had. The diff the final difficulty is set at 104. Um, I mean, obviously, the higher the number, the higher the difficulty. I don't remember what mine was on my first run through that I made the farthest in. I also always feel like, I don't know if this is the same for other people. Anytime I ever play, like, roguelikes and stuff like this, like uh, Binding of Isaac is another one. And like another really good good example, my first run is always the one that's the best. At least for a long time, like in Binding of Isaac, first run through made it to the final like the quote final boss, um, and then it took me for like I died and it took me forever to get back there, and in this game I made it like really far or I, I I'm, it seems like it was pretty far, um. And now I'm having trouble getting past like one or two stages. Uh, anyways, common loot count, total damage taken, uh, sieges complete, hugbots killed, and then you have your ability stats, so magnet distance, speed, weapon XP rate, luck, uh, crit factor, armor, damage multiplier, all, all sorts of stuff. And then you do have, uh, your collection. So this shows, like, all the different power-ups and items that you've found. So I've got a weird like it doesn't let you like like hover over these to see what they are like in case you forget um, but if you look at there's the tank there which is weird because I got it uh, and it was one of the items that I could use and I used it and like my screen started flashing and I couldn't move and I'm not sure if that was <laughs> the intended effect. It was didn't really seem to do anything, so that was weird. Uh, and then the other four were different uh, weapon power-ups. So the one with the bullet that has like fire around it, um, I believe that caused like an explosion whenever my shots like hit uh, the wall or the ground. Uh, there was one that was like a, ricoch a ricochet. So it was my my saw blades were like bouncing off walls. Uh, the one with three bullets, like, made it, like, a machine gun, so it was firing a lot faster. Uh, and the other one, I don't remember which one that did. Or what that did. And then, and then there you see some more stats. Some shots fired, ro robots killed, hugbots slaughtered. Uh, my best, my record lifespan was, uh, 34 minutes. Average, it's been eight minutes. Or about nine Best run, four stages completed. So I'm not sure how many stages there are. I've made it to, f to five at least. And rank. It's opportunistic, accident prone, corporal. Okay. Uh, anyways, that is... Uh, that's Tower of Guns. It seems interesting. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I think of it so far. I need to play more. It just seem, it, it seems pretty neat though. Uh, once again, that is a PlayStation Plus game right now on PS4 and PS3. So if you're a Plus member, you can get that for free now. If you're not, it is $15. So if it looks interesting to you, I'd check it out. And I mean, again, if you if you have Plus, you might as well at least give it a shot. Uh, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.